Welcome to Star Citizen Annex Anonymous, everyone. It's Nikki Backerl D'Angelo. Five years. Yes, I've been doing these for five years. And here is a tiny bit of a recreation of what I did five years ago. It's my Aurora MR sitting in the Selfland hangar, which is the closest I could get to that original hangar. And the hangars changed immensely. The Aurora's changed immensely. The gameplay's changed immensely. But yet we still don't have the finished game out. But I'm not going to knock Star Citizen today. There is no reason for me to do that. What I am going to do today is talk to you a little bit about what's going on with Star Citizen AA. And what I think about the game. So the first thing to go over is the excuses I continuously make. Work and school. Well, when I first started doing the channel, when I first started doing videos... I was just as busy as I am now with work, and all I've done is added school to the mix. And school is quite ridiculously hard, but it doesn't mean I don't have time. The difference between back then and now is I was working from a to-do list. So that's something I really need to do now because I'm really, I'm really disappointed in myself for not continuing to deliver great Star Citizen and other video game content. So that's something that I have, I have been doing and something that's helped me put out four videos in the past week. Second thing is technology. Well, my technology has quite a number of different issues going on with it. First thing was my motherboard went, but thank you, Asus. They took care of it post-haste, lickily split. Um... What's the British word for that? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, they took care of it rather quickly. And then right after that, my X56, which was a replacement for my X55, it went. And Logitech took care of that over the course of two and a half weeks, but in a very, very, very amazing way. And thank you, Logitech. So I have those things put aside. No more excuses about not being able to do the videos. So I guess the real reason is that I've been quite addicted to a couple of different games. You know, back uh, many months ago, it was Subnautica, then it was Conan Exiles, and it's still continuing to be a little bit of Conan. I sneak, I sneak in there when nobody knows I'm in there. Um, but it's also No Man's Sky. And No Man's Sky actually has rekindled the love of Star Citizen for me in a very weird way. And it's done it in a way where when No Man's Sky came out and I bought it and I jumped on the bandwagon of, you know, pitchforks and torches rushing into Hello Games and burning the place down because they lied. Well, they didn't lie. They probably got pushed by a publisher to release a game that wasn't ready. And, you know, what they've done is they fixed it over time. In fact, the latest patch, 1.5, 1.55, 1.57, 1 1.58, the next patch, NEXT is the name of the patch, has made that game actually absolute fun. But in playing it for quite a long time over the last few weeks, I don't know how it was ever stated that that was going to be much in common, that it was kind of much in common with Star Citizen. It has nothing in common with Star Citizen. It has more in common with Freelancer, more in common than with Subnautica than it does with Star Citizen. But those are two other games I absolutely love, so I really love playing No Man's Sky. The exploration, the base building, the beautiful planets that you, well, and also the, oh my god, this planet's trying to kill me, that you encounter just keeps me going back for more and more and more. And unfortunately, there's a time vortex that happens when I play the game. And one minute, it's 8 o'clock at night. And the next minute, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. And i got to get up for work. And I haven't done a video. So I now have timers on my games. So I stop playing at a certain time. All these things have kept me from doing videos. But if you notice, I put out a video a day. This will be my fourth day. And that will be pretty awesome, right? And I'm putting it out on my favorite content, Star Citizen. So seeing how No Man's Sky was fixed, it's made me wonder, am I being too hard on Star Citizen? Demanding certain things like a female character, like a playable game right now. 
And in many ways, you got to say, no, I'm not. But in some ways, you got to say, yes, I am. I knew what I was getting into when I bought this game. There's no doubt about that. I knew it was going to take time. I knew what Chris was telling me wasn't possible at all when I started giving money to the crowdfunding campaign. I knew it was going to be a long time. And I expected it to be because I wanted it to be the game that he was promising me. Well, now I'm getting more than he promised me. I'm still okay with it. And just seeing how No Man's Sky has been fixed over two years, I'm hoping the next two years brings us a much more playable version of Star Citizen. Not that it's not playable right now. Emerging gameplay is something that cre is something that Chris likes to say. Sorry, I was biting my tongue when I said that. Emerging gameplay is gameplay that's directed by the people that are playing it. Kind of like emergent leadership theory, where a leader isn't the leader that's picked, but the leader that emerges in conflict or in certain situations. Well, gameplay that just emerges inside of a game that's not done is emerging out of necessity, not out of design. So I don't like saying emerging gameplay is awesome inside of Star Citizen, but what I do like to say is it's freaking fun. Still, I want the game. I want the game, and over the next two years, as we go to a second and then a third, third planetary system and then a second star system and we start getting exploration and better mining and salvage and all these other professions into the game we don't have to look for that end game we don't have to look down the road and say everything is implemented we could look at the small little sound box that just keeps on expanding from a playground to a city to a state to a nation you know I guess that's not really a good analogy, but how it just keeps on doubling in size over time and gives you more and more area to play in. As that happens, I feel that more people are going to start trickling into the game. I'm going to start trickling into the game more, and I'm going to start loving it even more. More mission givers, female players, more ships, more professions, more NPCs, assumption, and the one, the only... OCS, Object Container Streaming, is the most important update that we will see to the game very shortly. And what does that mean for us? Better memory management, better frame rates, no stutters, no lock, not lockups, but no stalls when things are being generated in the game or leaving the game. It's going to be amazing. And I can't wait for that to come out in the next update. Speaking of the next update, the next update, instead of coming at the end of September, and I really want to hit the wall right now, it's coming October 10th. But it makes sense. It's coming during CitizenCon, and I'm looking at my CitizenCon 2014 poster, I think it is. Um, the one that somebody had signed for me by Chris and everybody that was there. CitizenCon is going to be amazing this year, at least they say it is. The way that it's being described, I'm just going to say it's going to be incredible. I volunteered this year. If you're going, please seek me out. Let's talk, let's have a selfie together, and let's have a drink. There's going to be many bar citizens that week also. But I'm very excited about this year because there's going to be an exponential growth in the playable area as we get Hurston as we get Hurston's moons and Hurston's, I guess they're going to be calling them something else. Truck stops instead of space stations, right? We're going to be getting a new type of space station. So all of this is coming, and I'm very, very, very excited. All right, so now i got to take a tangent because I have to talk about playing the game. When I play the game, you can tell that my system is struggling from time to time. Everybody's does because OCS isn't in it. We don't have object container streaming. But also, I'm playing on an ultra wide. You can tell that because I haven't, I haven't cut my playable area down to 1920 by 1080 because I refuse. If I have this big screen, I want to use it. Plus, it makes flying in space so much more beautiful and it makes 
arena commander and other pieces of the game so much more useful. So I have a 1070, one of the original 1070s that EVGA put out in the first couple of weeks that the 1070 was available. NVIDIA just announced the RTX series of graphics cards. Now this just isn't a change from like 970 to 1070 or 980 to 1080, which was substantial. I think it was a 15% increase in speed back then. This is an implementation of new technology. Well, technology that's been around forever, but now can be done real time on a desktop computer, and that's called ray tracing. It also adds in, I think it's dy dynamic learning super sam sampling. I think that's it. It's DLSS. It's the ability for the games to use an API put out by NVIDIA that immediately looks at all the different, I guess, jagged lines, anti-aliasing, and turns on and off anti-aliasing in kind of like a level of detail. I think this is it. I could be absolutely wrong, but I think that's what it's doing. So you can get a, so an, an amazing increase in frame rates when using it while not losing that beautiful crisp look of your lines that are right in front of you. So you wouldn't have lines that would be jagged in front of you and the ones that were far enough away would be so far away that you wouldn't notice them being jagged. I think that's what that is. But there aren't many games that are going to support it right off the bat and really twice as much for a graphic card. 1080 Ti to a 2080 Ti is a 2x jump. I mean, yes, at the height of the mining, right, the data mining craze, the 1080 got to like 1,500 and almost 2,000 sometimes. But really, it's a $600 card, $650 card. So I picked one up cheap, and that's what I'm going to upgrade my system with. And I'm going to sit back and wait and see what happens with the ray tracing technology and DLSS and how Star Citizen implements that down the road. But let me tell you this, if the demos at Gamescom with the new Tomb Raider running ray tracing are any indication of what's going to be going on for the next year with ray tracing, really, I don't want 30 frames a second. I want 120. I want 60. I want 100. But I want over 60 frames a second on my big monitor. And I know that this would probably be easily handled by a new 10 2080 or 2070 but not at the price that they're selling them for i don't want to spend that much money so what i've done is i've gotten ready to start delivering more content from the game with one 1080 ti and by selling my 1070 to a friend it really didn't cost me much at all if anything so what's going on now i'm moving forward with my channel i'm going to bring as much content out. I'm going to be playing Star Citizen. I'm going to be bringing you the state of the games and a hopefully more compact and more per more understandable news from Star Citizen. Folks, thank you so much for continuing to be a supporter, follower, subscriber of the channel. Star Citizen is coming on strong this year, believe me. By the end of the year, when they implement Hurston, we're all going to be going, wow. It's still not going to be a complete game. It's still going to be far from it. But it's going to give us even more to do in the game. When exploration and salvage and mining are all implemented, we're going to have a lot more to do, a lot more diversity in what we can do. So a lot more people that will have diverse likes will come into the game. And once the female models are there, I'm sure we'll see a lot more people coming in, I hope. I think I'm making too much of the female model, to be honest. I've just complained about it for so long. I like to throw it in there. So again, thank you all. And don't forget to click the thumbs up button if you do like the episode. If you want to subscribe, please also make sure to click the bell-shaped icon so you get notified of all my videos. And you could also help support the channel by going to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Batgirl, where you can become a patron. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can join my Discord server. You can play games with me, whatever it will be, and possibly get on my stream and possibly get in one of my YouTube videos if you're 
one of the people playing with me at the time. I will continue to play Star Citizen, No Man's Sky. I will be playing something called Two Point Hospital coming up. Not in the not too distant future and possibly Jurassic World, but we'll talk about that another day. It all depends on if I get convinced by a friend of mine to buy that game. I don't see it as a game. I see it as torture. With that said, folks, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.